All right, I would like to start things off and welcome you guys to the Sexy Time Fab YouTube channel. Here we go. All right, so it's super cold outside right now. So we're going to start off in this video with getting my oil burning stove going to get warmed up in here. And then it's going to be off to this Kia Sportage FE3 swap here and my Mazda B2000. All right, so I'm gonna set things down real quick. I'm gonna get a fire going to get warm in here and we're gonna set things off. warming up in here we are going to get started on more of what this video is going to be about this video is going to be for those of you that have purchased my Mazda B2000 FE3 harness kit all right so we are going to get jumped straight into how to install and things like that i already have it installed in my truck and it's through my firewall i am not going to be pulling it out to fully show you how it's done because it is pretty simple the way i did it you, the way i did it all right through the firewall you guys can do a better job all right i i did a hack job of a job shoving this harness <laughs> through my firewall all right well to the rubber grommet that was not the firewall itself so here we are all righty so as you can see down in here excuse the stock mess of wiring in here my truck isn't perfect and i'm expecting your guys's not to be either so this little rubber grommet right here i literally cut a straight line in it all the way across and shove the harness in it like that you could she's a little tough to get out of there but you could pull this rubber grommet out and as you can see I have pretty much cut it in half to shove the speedy plugs through the firewall and up and over the blower fan into the glove box is where I like to put mine i just it's dark in here wish i had some light but there is a hole drilled in the back corner of my glove box you take the glove box out take out these two screws and these screws glove box comes out and you just put the harness through there pretty simple i am absolutely trying to make this as simple and easy for you guys as it can be so the harness comes out and everything splits off and divides right here and then you got your air intake temp your idle air control valve your tps and your coolant temp sensor which i know you guys can see this we will talk about this here in a moment just bear with me for a second and obviously the crank angle sensor a hole needs to be drilled into the transmission for the crank angle sensor to work right like the stock Kia Sportage so what I have done is made a bracket which I will show you guys that here soon and as you can see I am working on putting a turbo on this truck which you guys will see more of that here soon so here's the ignition coil harness installation so you run your four ignition coil plugs to your ignition coils here. And then that runs back to your speedy harness. And it plugs into the speedy harness right here. I made this separate for those of you guys that would like to run different ignition coils of your choosing. So I left this here as an option for you guys if you guys would like to do that. 
So the ground wire for the ignition coils comes out of the harness right here and just back to the valve cover. And then ignition coil number one needs to be cut on the mounting tab right here for it to clear on the valve cover, which isn't going to be an issue. So don't, don't stress quite yet. I have a solution for this. The stock coil cover fits nicely over these 1NZ coils. If you place a little bit of foam padding on the inside of this cover, like such, here I'll grab one of these. I'm probably not gonna use this, but as an example, you place this inside here and you put the cover onto the coils and just with this little bit of squish, it presses those coils nicely down onto the spark plugs. And that's it. I will be making a legitimate ignition coil bracket eventually, probably with a different style of the 1NZ coils that have a mounting tab that's slightly offset. So stay tuned for that as well. And that's it for the ignition coil install. So moving on to the crank angle sensor bracket, I have tried to make this as simple as I could for you guys buying this kit. All you have to do is simply mount your bracket to the transmission, preferably outside of the vehicle and not attached to the engine unless you want aluminum flakes all over your clutch and flywheel. So you take a little bit of paint with a paint pen and you put it on the end of a socket and this socket here is a half inch quarter drive socket and you place it through the hole with wet paint on it marking you a nice mark for you to make a hole for your sensor and you start out with a small bit and if you got some burr bits you could start out with a small bit to create a hole and then you take what I did was a burr bit or a drill bit works too, whatever you guys have. And you bore out the hole and keep boring it out and checking it with the crank angle sensor itself that it fits snugly into the hole. I have made these as nice and tight as I can. The crank angle sensors might be a little stiff pushing through, but not too tight. I wanted them to be you know nice and snug and then that's that and i have them already spaced to where they need to be when you mount them but these brackets you can if you need to push down on them ever so slightly to bring the crank angle sensor into the flywheel if needed to be or vice versa pull it back out yeah, that's that for the crank angle sensor bracket. All right, I am going to be showing you guys a little bit of the inside of the cab wiring that is necessary for the install of this kit. So what I have done here is there is a brown wire, which is an engine block ground for your wide band, which will be coming off of the harness. You guys will easily be able to find it when you guys get your kits. And then there will be the uh, ignition switched red wire to the Speedy EFI itself, which will re require ignition switch power source, which I have that ran to my ignition. And what else? There is a pink wire which reads the wideband for the speedy which I will leave that out and label it for you guys I will also have all these wires labeled for you guys as well and then there will be a thicker gauged wire which is your main wire that goes to your ignition coils your injectors the idle air control valve all that through the harness which you will run this wire this wire will be shorter off of the harness when you buy it so you will have to take extra wire and wire it from your ignition which i will show you here in a second how i did that in my truck 
to your harness and that's as simple as that i have my wide band ground the ground ground itself grounded in here to the dash whatever you want to call that brack, bracket in there and that's that we will go to the other side of the truck and i will show you guys where i have wired the power source for my harness itself so right here we have the wires coming out of the ignition itself and i will grab my screwdriver here and take off this little piece of shrouding i mean this is this is going to be raw footage for you guys i don't care you guys can watch me struggle with this stubby screwdriver and a screw and laugh all you want I really don't care. All right, let me take this guy. This guy pops up like that. Bam, and then you got your ignition wires right here. And I have tapped in to the wire right here. So it is the It is the black and yellow wire on the ignition right here. And uh, yeah, then it's just turnkey. That's as simple as it gets. Also, I forgot to show you guys where I put the engine block ground on the harness. So right here on the side of the block, there is a stock knock sensor that goes there. And where we're going, we don't need a knock sensor, dude. If, if it's knocking, you already messed it up. So yeah, we just put our uh, harness ground right here on the side of the block. Worked great for me. And then I will also show you guys what I did for the Kia alternator wiring, which <laughs> I have not finished yet. Um, it is just loosely two pieces of wire coming off of the stock alternator plug for your V2000 wiring for the battery and all the stock stuff is still in my truck. I just snipped the uh, original alternator plug off and ran two wires right on over to my Kia FE3 alternator. And that's, that's that. That's as... That's as simple as it get, gets. All right, and one last thing for you guys. You guys will need a 3 8 18 NTP tap to be able to tap a GM coolant temp sensor into your thermostat housing. And then you'll also need the same tap to tap a GM air intake temp sensor into your intake, which I have done here. Super easy. It's not rocket science. I know these things scare a lot of people, but take your time. Don't go crazy with the drilling. Take your time, check, drill a little bit and check. So that's that, that is it. Um, yeah all right guys so i think that about wraps it up for the install video if you guys have any questions leave a comment below or contact me at sexytimefab at gmail.com i will also have that in the video link description below also with a link description to speedy efi i am going to give these guys a shout out because these guys are the ECU that I am using with these harness kits. I am also running one on my 1JZ swapped FC Arc 7, which I will have content on in the near future. So if you guys want 
more and other content from me, let me know. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, whatever. I think I might also do a little video on the stove over here, the oil burning stove for you guys. If you guys would like to watch something like that as well. And uh, yeah, yeah, here we go. This is it. This is the start to it all, dude. Let's get it.